I am Kiana Brathwaite, and I will be talking about the ebbs and flows of race today. Um, so really quick um, introduction, of course, I want you to think about um, what those words mean to you, right? So ebb, flow, um, and even grace. Um, I know grace has some religious connotations for people, um, but also I kind of want you to just think, you know, do you provide yourself with grace? Do you provide others with grace? And I'll delve into those topics a little bit more. Um, so I'm Keanu Brathwaite. I am a registered nurse and I um, started a company, KB Calls, and it pretty much teaches people how to use the healthcare system. Um, it's a system that is daunting, very frustrating, um, and it's a system in which we kind of don't come to it with our whole selves. Um, and it's also a system that kind of tells us how we should come to it. So my company teaches people healthcare education, um, and then it teaches them how to use that education and plan out their health to move towards whatever well-being is um, or wellness is as far as their definition. A little housekeeping. So I am not the biggest presenter when I talk. Um, I, don't, I don't usually use slides. So if you um, want to ask me any questions, I have Natalie here who's going to help me take care of those. Um, and then if you want to just unmute yourself if there's something that I'm saying or, or you know, a slide that I come across and you want to talk about, um, definitely do that. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I have up here because I just wanted to provide context as I share um, how to use ebbs and flows to move yourself towards a level of wellness um, and health. Um, so as you can see, ebb, definition, moving away from, right? Movement of tide out to sea, receive, lessen, and reduce. So I'm really kind of leaning more towards, as I'm talking, about the receding piece, right? The lessening piece. Um, that kind of, you know, not feel that, that down as far as, as versus the up, okay? And the next one would be flow. So in flow, I'm really talking from a, a psychological place because there's this flow state that we kind of get into. Um, and that's moving continuously and steadily, as I said, flow state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed. They feel energized, they're focused, it's that zone, right? So you're in your zone, you're in your flow state. And then the next one, of course, grace. So I love this image when, um, whenever I think about grace, it was always something that I provided outwardly or, you know, somebody else gave me permission to give or, um, but grace is really exercising love, kindness, and goodwill externally and internally, right? So as we're, ex as we're allowing for grace in others, we should first allow for grace within ourselves. It's also a disposition to benefit or serve another and the capacity to tolerate, accommodate, or forgive. So those are just the words that you're going to kind of hear me using as I'm talking. And I really like this quote because, um, again, for me, as I talk about my journey and share some of the tactics and practices that I use um, in living ebbs and flows, I um, came across this and it just, it stunned me because grace is all of these things, right? So it shocks, it stuns, which exactly it did for me as I started to learn that it was something I needed to provide for myself as well as others. And it's always what we need. So as you start providing yourself with grace, as you can see, um, this person, it's Anne Voskamp um, is her quote. And it pretty much turns the lights on. And that's exactly what it did for me as I started to really show this to myself. Um, now that we have that, and these two, I love these little chickens. I always talk about these chickens because um, they remind me as I'll talk. Sometimes I'm in that space of the chicken looking at the other chicken going, what in the world? And then other times I'm that chicken with the colorful hair going, yes, right? Um, and then other people are kind of looking at me like, what? Um, so let me share a little bit about my story. Yep, hold on. I'll stay with the chickens. Um, let me share a little bit about my story. So I started, I actually am a registered nurse by vocation. I've been in healthcare for well over 20 years. And um, I grew up with that can do, determine, build a bridge, get over it type of attitude. Um, but I also um, always provided myself, I always wanted my own way. Like I, I wanted, not my own way, but I, I wanted to find my way, right? And not always do it other people's way. So I started in healthcare 
low rung nursing assistant, worked my way through. And I went a non-traditional route now. Um, it was extremely traditional many, many years ago. I actually went to a hospital-based program and um, which provided me with a diploma and not my baccalaureate. And the reason I did that was because I wanted the most hands-on, most um, immersive program that I could find. And when I was doing my research, the baccalaureate programs didn't really allow for that. There was way more theory than there was hands-on. And I'm very much a hands-on learner. So as I went through this, again, you know, um, going the non-traditional route, when you graduated from nursing school, you did like five years of um, med surge, and then you jumped into whatever your specialty was going to be. And I said, that's not for me. That's not what I'm going to do. Now, before that, let me walk back a little bit. Um, before finding nursing, I actually went to three different colleges and universities um, and failed out of all three of them. And finally decided, okay, let me let me take a step back. This isn't working. Um, and that was one of those ebbs, right? So I had to kind of recede. I had to pull in and say, all right, really, what am I looking to do? Um, the, the track that I was on, which was engineering, wasn't something that I enjoyed. So I was like, all right, let me let me rethink, let me regroup. Um, and then as I regrouped, that's when I fell into healthcare and the nursing assistant position allowed me to kind of explore the healthcare industry in a way um, that maybe I wouldn't have been able to in college. So that was that flow. Once I really got into healthcare and was able to talk to people in different positions, understand what it was that they did and how they helped, um, I stumbled into and upon wanting to be a registered nurse. So there is that there is that that ebb and flow, right? Like. I'm going to college, that's what I was supposed to do. You know, um, it wasn't working, I kept trying and I had to kind of pull back and say, okay, why isn't this working? And when I found that thing that allowed me to be in my flow state that I really enjoyed, that my heart was there, I was able to um, lean in fully, immerse myself and enjoy the career. So I graduate, supposed to go down the med surge track. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. I wanna go into critical care, that's where my heart is. Um, after doing many clinicals, because you do clinicals in all different areas to get an idea of what you want to do, um, I was told no. So um, I kind of, again, receded, right? I was like, you know, this is the direction that I really want to go in, um, and how do I get there? So when I finally said, this is what I want, I, was get, I had an opportunity, started in uh, critical care at University of Penn, actually Penn's the first hospital, in Pennsylvania, and I um, did really well. Now, throughout all of this, um, when I was younger, and this is kind of where the, the healthcare piece falls in, right? So when I was younger, I knew I had to make sure that as a young woman, I had an OBGYN, I was going to the doctor, I had a primary, um, and my health was really important to me. I had the opportunity, I had the time, I had the energy to focus in on it. And then as all of these other things started to happen in life, you know, you, you kind of life, like the entrepreneurial journey, it, there's ups and there's downs. There's ways that you can pay attention or times where you can pay more attention to certain aspects of your life. And then there's times where you just have to, you know, you're in survival mode. 2020 was like the biggest survival mode year, I think, for a lot of us. So I'm thinking that we all can understand that, you know, you can prior, you have to prioritize, you have to triage. And so um, as I was going through this journey of figuring out what my career was going to be, um, my, I shifted to paying attention to my career and not necessarily my health. Um, fast forward, I'm working, have children, and um, of course, you know, there's some weight gain because I don't have the time that I used to have to do the things that I was doing to take care of myself. I wasn't seeing my positions as I should, and um, there was a lot of stress at work. So... With the, the stress, um, my, my body started to give me little notices. Um, it started off very small first with, you know, high blood pressure here in my 20s, of course. Um, there was, you know, some chest pain. There was some other things that were going on. And I had to kind of shift my focus and kind of recede in my career and pay attention to um, my health. And, and a lot of times, well, for me, I can speak, um, it was very frustrating, right? Because I wanted to be able to have the energy and the focus on all aspects of myself, but it was kind of like this give and take, right? I had to 
give here and I had to take away from here to be able to actually um, give somewhere else. And so there was a point into my career where I ended up um, sustaining multiple injuries to the same part of my body. And I found out later on um, why, but it was one of, again, you know, one of those wake up calls that I, I was being given and um, had to pay attention to. So after the injury, the, you know, I had the career ending, ending injury and I had to step away from something that I really loved, which was being at the bedside, taking care of patients, critical care. Um, I couldn't do that anymore after I was injured. And so that was a really low ebb, right? I mean, it was almost tidal wave type, <laughs> you know, um, cause it was, it came out of nowhere for me. And I really had to take some time to kind of regroup and um, understand what it was that I enjoyed doing, how were my skills transitionable, were my skills transitionable, right? Like I had been in healthcare for so long that I hadn't really stepped into any other industry. And so it was like, you know, can I go into any other industry? Do I have that option? And um, that was a really low time for me uh, because I wasn't, I had lost the confidence that I had had with all of the training and all of the time and all of the experience. I mean, I was at a point where I really had to sit with myself and um, that was really difficult because I'm a mover. Like I'm, I'm always doing, I'm always thinking, I'm all, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving all around and I'm always busy. So the, um, that point gave me an opportunity and in that opportunity eventually came this attention to providing myself with what I call grace and space, which goes along with the ebbs and flows of grace. Um, and in doing that, when I, when I sat with myself and was like, okay, I need to, I can't beat myself up for this. You know, I didn't choose to be injured. Um, life changed. And how do I adapt to that change, right? How do I come out of this on the other side? And what does that look like? And so as I did that, I tried different things. I went into the education field and recognized that while I was in that field, I did not enjoy it. I found myself talking about healthcare in the, <laughs> you know, in the education field um, when I was in the director position. And I was like, okay, so my heart is really in this healthcare piece. How can I make that happen? Or how can I continue this in a way that allows me to pay attention to all aspects of myself and provide myself with grace. And that's how I stepped into entrepreneurship. And it was reluctant. Um, it's actually my husband that gave me the, the Anna girl and said, you know, step out there and try and do the thing that, that you love to do because you've been wanting to do. And, um, but that wasn't easy, right? I had no experience. I actually came from um, a family of employees. So I was, again, stepping out, making my own um, track and had to figure that out. And so I land into entrepreneurship and I'm um, in a place of, again, self-discovery because I think entrepreneurship is really about knowing yourself, right? You need to know um, what you want. You need to know where you want to go. You need to know, you know, um, what are my energy levels? Can I get this done? Do I need help? You know, you need to be able to ask for help in entrepreneurship. And so as um, I stepped into this and continued the journey, I started to learn, okay, I need to give myself grace. For instance, I fight with technology. I think we all do at some point. When it works, it works. And when it doesn't, it's like, oh my goodness. But it can be a barrier. I'm very much a 20th century girl where I love to write things out. I need to you know, put pen to paper. That's how my brain works. And when it comes to creating presentations or making proposals um, or doing something on social media, those are all outside of my comfort zone. And so I had to provide myself that grace that knowing, okay, I would project manage and say, yes, I want to get my website done. Um, it's January. I should be able to knock this out by the beginning of March. March comes around and I'm still working on my website, right? Because there were technical things that I didn't know about um, or wasn't aware of as I stepped into it. So the timeline that I gave myself wasn't the most realistic based off of, you know, not knowing what I didn't know. And so, you know, you kind of 
go with these these highs and these lows and you kind of you know you have to um, enjoy the wins but really the the hard times they are there as challenges and they're there for a reason um, and they are there to kind of help you um, understand yourself and you know help you get to that next level whatever that level might be for you um, and so you know as I'm, I think I'm in moving into my fifth year as a business owner and in entrepreneurship, I, I lean into a, one other thing that happened while I was going, when I first stepped into entrepreneurship was, and one of the um, speakers for Founders Focus, which is one of the groups I'm in, said this poignantly, like, he would have setbacks and end up in a corner, you know, kind of crying and going, this isn't how it was supposed to be. And I used to resist those moments. I used to really say, I don't understand why I'm so, you know, down or, or why, I'm, why, I'm, why I'm so depressed or, you know, what's going on. And I would, I would really resist those moments, um, which were educational moments because they were, they were not just educational moments, but they were also kind of like breakthroughs in the sense of, um, I'm trying to think of one. So I had um, this idea, but I'll go with the website. So I, again, had this timeline for my website that I had created for myself, again, not knowing um, all of what was going to be part of this process. And as I stepped into it and got closer and closer to my deadline, I, I felt myself really getting frustrated and angry and um and it was because i had set these expectations and they weren't the most realistic expectations and i didn't recognize that the expectations that i set i was internalizing those so as i'm internalizing them and i'm getting closer to my deadline i'm getting more and more depressed because it's not looking like i'm going to be able to launch um, on the date that i said i was going to launch now mind you these were expectations and dates that were self-imposed. Nobody else imposed these on me, but I being the person that I was at the time and saying, okay, I have all these years of life experience underneath me. I should be able to, right? And um, one of my mentors says all the time, you should not, don't should on yourself. And um, as I was doing that, that's when I was going into that deep decline, right? That's when I was going into that ebb. That's when I was really starting to recede and turn in and actually really start to shut down. And um, I had to learn that these things are fluid, just like, and, and being a mom on top of being a business owner and running a household, all of those things, I was not taking into account. I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this. I can just focus on that. Um, as a person, who probably is juggling 50 million balls because I think we all have multiple things on our plate at any given time and any given day, it's imperative that you take those things into account, right? I have 20 things that I'm taking care of. How are those other 19 things gonna affect this one thing that I'm trying to get done, that I'm working on, this deadline that I'm setting? And um, if you take that into account as much as possible, then you come up with something that's a lot more realistic and you provide yourself with the grace to say, okay, this is what my hard date is, but it can be a little flexible. If something happens that you don't necessarily account for or a variable occurs or your technology goes completely kaput and now you have to get a whole new Wi-Fi system and a new laptop, um, just use that as an example, then you, know, you give yourself the time to be able to allow those things to happen fix all of that, and then launch or do whatever the project is. Um, so as, as, I, as, as I walk through this journey and as I um, really have talked to people who were in the space, that have been in the space for a long time, and that was something else that I would always recommend that you reach out and build a community because there's people that's gonna kind of be behind you and there's people that's gonna be right where you are and there are people that are gonna be in front of you. And those people that are online with you are, are kind of your cheerleading squad, right? They're the ones that say, rah, rah, we're, you know, these are our, this is, that was your one win. Celebrate that, right? And then all of the other stuff figure it out as you go along. And then the people that are ahead of you 
are the ones who are like, yes, I experienced that. I mean, as I've built up and had so many different people who have been in entrepreneurship for well over, um, you know, 10, 15 years and talking to them and hearing their stories and recognizing that, you know, you're not alone in what you're going through, um, that this process is exactly that. And it's an ongoing process and that other people experience similar things and they come out on the other side. Um, that has helped me be able to lean into even the ebbs, like the receding, like, okay, I'm at this, I'm at this crazy brick wall point. Um, I didn't expect to be here, but I know people who have kind of been through this, um, who have made it through, who are doing well. And this is just that one brick wall. I can either go under, I can go over, I can chip away at it. I can just sit there and let it be and maybe go to the right or to the left. So those people are very imperative in your group and getting you to help you to be able to get yourself through that. And then the people who are coming behind you, right? I always like to talk about those people because sometimes when you hit a wall, it's helpful to turn around and see who's behind you and who's coming behind you and reach a hand back and say, you know what? This is your wall. Let me help you through your wall because helping you through your wall actually helps me through my wall or it helps me see my wall very different, right? So it changes my wall perspective. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to pause, help someone else out, see that win, enjoy the energy from that win, and then go back to whatever your wall is. If it's still there, you know, in a very different mental state. Um, and that can lean into, you know, your flow state. Because if you're stepping away, sometimes you need to give yourself the opportunity to step away, right? And, and change your, uh, your tactics or change, not just your perspective, um, but just give, you know, allow you that room to breathe, that, that grace and space to like really breathe and see what's going on in a different way. And we don't always give ourselves permission to step away. I've, I've always been one of those people that's kind of that push through, let's make it happen. Um, no matter what I've made up my mind and this is what I want. And then when I get the opportunity to step away, if I'm helping somebody out or I, if I just close, you know, my laptop and walk away and I come back with a clearer head, then um, it doesn't affect me the same way. It doesn't, um, I'm not as hard on myself as I was when I first encountered whatever that wall is. And, um, you know, it gives you an opportunity to, like I said, breathe. And as you're helping the person behind you, it gives you an opportunity to celebrate both of you, right? Um, so in the vein of um, living life, because, um, life is going to be good. It's going to be difficult. It's going to provide you with challenges. If you learn how to um, lean into, especially the ebbs, I, I, I think the ebbs are like the best place to lean into. Um, if you're leaning into those ebbs, then you are allowing yourself to also lean into what it is that you need to get through those ebbs. Um, we have situations where people, um, ourselves, as I said, with expectations, we expect that we need or we're gonna do one thing. And then when we hit that wall, we need to um, just take a deep breath. And I'm gonna do that really quick. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm recent. Um, so I kind of got a little thrown off there, excuse me. Um, <laughs> leaning into the ebbs. Okay, there we go. So if you're leaning into your ebbs, you also give yourself the opportunity to ask for help, right? And to know what your health and in different aspects of health. So we look at health mostly from a physical standpoint. I think that's the first place that we step into, but there's health on a spiritual level. There's mental health, right? There's um, emotional health, there's environmental health. So there's different levels of health. And those, the times where our, that we're hitting those challenges, sometimes those other aspects aren't really being paid attention to. 
Um, and those ebbs really give us a chance to say, okay, I may be doing what I need to do for myself. I'm going for a run or I'm exercising or I'm eating right or whatever the case may be, but am I supporting myself emotionally, right? And if I'm not supporting myself emotionally, what does that look like? Um, does it look like I need to go out with friends? Does it look like I need to, um, you know, as I said, have scheduled time where I'm shutting down my laptop and I'm stepping away? Does it look like, um, you know, maybe I need to have a therapist on board because emotions and your mental health are sometimes tied in together? Um, the spiritual aspect. I had one of my doctors actually tell me that I was doing everything I needed to do for myself health-wise, like physically, but spiritually, I was not supporting myself, which was, you know, a punch in the face kind of because I'm a type A personality. I was like, I'm doing everything right. What are we talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to walk my talk. And um, but when she said that, she also provided me with a resource and I started to implement meditation practices because my mind was always going. And I think that's something that is not just entrepreneurs we have, but I did. I have found that now that I have my own business, I am on 24-7. So learning how to take a moment and be present and be mindful and not worry about what's going on in the future or what happened in the past, what I didn't do right, what I can improve, but just really enjoying and centering and being here in the now, um, that resource that she provided me has also helped me to lean into both the ebbs and the flows. Um, and to, to be able to say from a creativity standpoint, okay, I'm ready to tackle this project, right? Or I'm ready to um, present at this organization or whatever the case is, or if you're a product-based business, you know, I have to get these orders out by a certain time. I can provide myself with the energy and the grace of space to be able to take care of that. Um, so that's the other piece of it is just, as you're leaning into the ebbs and flows, really paying attention to those different aspects of yourself that you have to give room for, right? That you you can't just blanket over it and say, I'm just gonna deal with this part because of those other parts. They need to be paid attention to. They are part of you. And if you're not giving them what they need, you're going to, in some way, shape or form, hit that wall, right? Um, I just wanted to touch base, check in, make sure, were there any chats in them or anything? No, okay, good. All right. Um, and into walking into that whole, you know, healthcare space and speaking on when to ask for help um, or when, when, when you're at that point where there are certain parts of you that are saying, hey, you need to pay attention to me a little bit more, um, then that's when you start to look at, okay, from a health standpoint, um, you know, who are my resources that I can reach out to? Do I have people in that space that, um, I, that are a resource for me. I fortunately had a great relationship with my integrative medicine doc where she could tell me, you're not, you know, you're, you're not supporting yourself here. But that took a long time to build that relationship. So it's not something that you you can have, depending on who you're working with and where you are, you can have that relationship or you can click right away. And other times it's a rapport that you have to take time and you have to build up. But you can also take stock of, the resources that you have in the people that are around you in your health insurance, right? Or if you don't have health insurance, there are other ways that you can take care of yourself. Um, you know, clinics, um, the, the therapy is a really big one. Um, you know, you can also reach out to different, um, I know there's like Philadelphia group of the aging, but some of the social work type situations, even um, Medicaid, yes, Medicaid, because um, Medicare is for older adults. So for even um, Medicaid, you can reach out to those entities and say, I need help, what is, what's provided for me? Um, here in Pennsylvania, we have penny.com where you can go, or you can go to healthcare.gov and see, because they have a whole list of resources, um, things and the ways that uh, when it comes to like your insurance, what you don't have, what was considered preventative care, um, and then using those as a resource. You can also like SCORE is a really good um, organization as far as being able to tap into the different resources within your area because they've built such a large network. Um, so we're just really checking in with yourself and saying, okay, 
I'm in this really tough low point. Who's there? How can I get help? Um, what is it that I need to pay attention to? And how do I, how do I support myself through this process? Um, and does it mean that I just need to sometimes just sit with it and be okay with sitting with it and letting that go through um, and work through that part of your process? Um, so I, um, yeah, so the resources, um, checking in with yourself and uh, recognizing that entrepreneurship can feel lonely and it can be isolating in so many different ways. One of them is, you know, you're so bent on um, growth or getting started or wherever you are in your business stage that you can at times have your blinders on and put your head down and, you know, you're just trying to get, have, get to the next level and get to the next level. Um, and you, when you look up, you're like, okay, wait, um, it's January, now it's June, now it's December, you know, the year has completely gone by and I haven't done any or seen, you know, my friends or my family. Um, and so I had a really good friend that actually told me in that case, cause I found myself feeling isolated. Uh, he was like, okay, chunk out your time, right? So if you have four hours of you know, business time, then use that time and chunk that out and then give yourself two hours to go network, to go you know, hang out with your family, to go for a walk. I mean, even something as simple as getting out from underneath your desk and going out into nature and just enjoying um, the things that you get to enjoy, being out in the sun, the breeze, some people like heat. I'm not one of those people, but you know, some people like warmth and humidity. So getting out and enjoying those things and using that kind of process to say, okay, um, to keep me from feeling isolated, these are the things I'm going to put in place purposefully and intentionally so that if this happens, I'm not behind the eight ball or I know it's going to come. I already have these things in place. I think that's the other piece of like entrepreneurship is like learning how to support yourself as you're growing your business. It's very interesting to be an employee because you have this day to day interaction with your colleagues and, you know, your mentors and your bosses and everybody that's in and around you. But when you're building something, you don't necessarily have that. So it's very imperative to start building that in and recognizing if you're coming from being an employee, recognizing, okay, these are the things, the water cooler time was really important to me. So how do I get that water cooler time now that I'm in this space and intentionally building that in um, and letting that help you not necessarily prevent. I don't think that you can really prevent the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. I think what you just have to do is say, I know they're going to happen. Um, and I, I know that these are some of the things that I need to do as these things are happening or paying attention to, you know, the trigger. Like I said, for me, one of my triggers was I'm setting these deadlines and then I have all of these other things that I'm responsible for. And they sometimes were getting in the way and I would get closer and closer to my due date and I'm not making the grade, right? I'm grading myself, yes, but I'm not making the grade that I want to make. And so um, and, and when I'm getting close to that, when I'm saying, okay, this date is approaching, I haven't gotten this thing done that would allow me to do the next thing, do I need to reset the date? You know, was the date realistic? Um, was did I really have a good grasp of what it was that I needed to get done and what it all entailed? Um, and those are the things that help me work through that trigger point, right? Help me stay within a healthy equilibrium and say, okay, here, here comes that F, here comes that tidal wave. How do I dissipate that energy? Um, and that's, those were, that's one of the tips and tricks that I would give you is to just pay attention to what that looks like and how that feels and, and you know, the fact that it's coming up and leaning into feeling. So that was another thing that I was not um, really well versed at because again, that build a bridge mentality, right? Something happens, you work your way through it or you, you, you get to the point where you're just like, all right, I need to 
just push all of this aside and I'm gonna, you know, um, move forward. The gentleman that talked to, that talked that one day about crying in the corner, um, it was like, wow, you know, this this guy is actually sitting in his emotions and he's sharing with people that this was an experience of his, which I'm sure was very deep and very dark, but to really also sit with your emotions, um, they're telling you something and they're important. And while they come and go, um, they're still kind of like a guidance system, right? So before you kind of go over that cliff, sometimes you can see, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm not feeling engaged or I'm, I'm feeling down or, you know, getting out of bed is hard because I don't really look forward to what I'm, what the work that I'm doing or um, there's the aspect of my business that I really got into doing my business for, which for me is teaching people how to use the healthcare system. Um, there are so many other pieces to that. There's marketing, there's sales, you know, there's um, document development, there's follow-up, there's email, there's all of these other things that you don't think about when you're like, yes, I'm going to start a business. And so you kind of sometimes get bogged down by those and you no longer enjoy what you're doing and you forget why you're doing it. So before you get to that point where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And that may very well be the, the best thing for you. But before you completely just say no, you know, or stop, you have to give yourself that opportunity to kind of look at it and say, all right, what led me here, right? Um, how did I get here? Was it the fact that I don't like marketing? Um, and is it that I don't like marketing or is it that, you know, the, the platform that I'm using makes it really difficult? Is there some sort of barrier that's being, that I'm hitting um, when it comes to doing marketing? Um, I just use marketing as an example, but, you know, it, how did I get to this point before I'm going over the cliff? And, and let me really sit with this and not sweep it under the rug or not push it away. Let me really pay attention to what this feeling is telling me. And how can I use even the bad, quote unquote, even the bad feelings are feelings that we can use to our advantage. Um, you know, anger, I, I actually say anger is a superpower because it's a motivator and it kind of tells you that something's going on and you need to fix it or take a, you know, pay attention. Um, sadness, you know, or disappointment. Um, disappointment is one of those things where, you know, an expectation was had and you, it wasn't met in some way, shape, or form. So was it you that didn't meet it? Was it somebody else that didn't meet it? Was the expectation articulated well? Um, was there a clear discussion around the expectation and how the expectation was going to be met? And if that wasn't, then there's your opportunity to say, okay, maybe I need to be a little clearer on when I have these expectations, how I'm going to articulate them to the people that I need to articulate them to, right? Um, the, the feeling of, um, you know, joy and happiness. And then that, that flow state that comes that, accompanies, you know, joy and happiness. Okay, what is it about this thing that I'm doing that brings me joy? What is it about this particular time in the day that is, you know, I really dive in and I can knock out 16 different things, but as soon as, you know, two o'clock hits, I'm, I'm done. I have to shut down. Those kinds of feelings are really in what's coming from those feelings and how you're using those feelings um, really gives you a nice gauge and allows you to, again, check in with yourself and support yourself, um, but also that grace to say, all right, so my high point, because I know there are some entrepreneurs like, I get up at four o'clock and I do all these things in the morning. I'm not one of those, either I'm more of a 10 o'clock type person, um, <laughs> like, or 11, yeah. um, <laughs> You know, I, some people are up early and they can knock out three or four hours. You know, they can do a whole day's work in three or four hours. And then you have other people, and I like to call it gear shifting, right? Where you have to shift gears. So I'm, I'm in um, my morning routine mode. And what does that look like? And then now I'm in work mode for two or three hours. And what does that look like? And what am I getting done? And okay, I need to, you know, pull out for a certain number of hours or shut down by two o'clock. You know, I find it so awesome in this journey that you get to set, you technically get to set your schedule. 
And um, I learned this from, I think it's Just Salads. My son loves Just Salads. And so there was like the weekend we were going to order Just Salads. And I realized that Just Salads was closed on the weekend. And I'm going, wait a minute, we want salad. I mean, you know, how are we going to get salad on the weekend? And so me being who I am, um, I called the 800 number and I was like, is this something new? Because it was, you know, kind of in the pandemic and I'm going, well, did they change their hours? Are they going to come back? And the young lady didn't, she looked into it for me. She was like, no, this has actually been something that they've done since they opened up this particular location. And I was like, whoa, so you mean to tell me as a business that provides food that you get to shut down on a weekend and people still patronize? So that was like even eye opening to me um, and a great experience because I, it really helped me lean into saying, ha, I get to set my schedule and my clients, they will lean into whatever my schedule looks like and I get to set that boundary. So, you know, you get to lean into those feelings and then recognize, okay, how can I use these as, you know, energy and creative and all of that, this stuff, but then also how can I use this information to create something in my business that's gonna allow me to be at my best, right? Um, and that's kind of what we we are all working towards. Like, what does our best look like? What does our health look like? How do we define wellness for ourselves? And it looks very different for each individual person. And with just salads, as well as Chick-fil-A, that's okay, right? Um, it'll, it'll be all right. So I, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I think that it's great and you continue to learn about yourself as you go along and your life cycles actually also change. For instance, me being a mom, I'm a mom of two cyber school students who are now in middle school. And what that looked like was very different than when my kids were in elementary school and how hands-on I had to be. Um, and I get to lean into now this particular point in, as a mom and then how, um, the, the stage that I am as a mom, what that looks like in my business, right? And I get to form my business around my life stage. Um, and I think that's a, a great opportunity. It's really interesting to be able to do that um, and just really allow myself that space to say, okay, you know, my kids don't need me as much. My business still needs me. So I can lean into my business or my kids don't need me as much. My business is kind of, you know, it's gained some traction, it's doing really good. Maybe I can pick up this project over here and play around with this and, you know, do this different thing. And that was another thing that I learned too, was I, I do well with multiple projects. So if I'm only focusing on one thing, I actually, um, it's counterintuitive for me. It, it, it throws me completely off if I only have one thing to focus on. So when I have these other things that I'm doing that I'm focusing on, um, it allows me to play and playing was something that is, I didn't realize I needed. Um, and so I get to play with all of these other things while I'm, I'm working in my business and, and you, you, it, it's a journey. It's a continuous journey. It continuously changes. Maybe in five years, maybe I'll only be focused on one thing, but right now I need to play. I need to dibble and dabble. Um, so being able to pay attention to, you know, that was another thing that was causing, that, that was triggering my ebb was the fact that I wasn't giving myself these places to play and to dabble. I was just, you know, grinding and really just focusing on this one thing. Um, and you, you, you get to know yourself. As I said, you, you change, um, you, you evolve and it's, it, you're not static. None of us are static. We're completely dynamic individuals. So you just pay attention to that. Um, lean into the ebbs and the flows. Lean into the definition of health for you. Pay attention to the different aspects of yourself. Um, because if you're not approaching yourself holistically, you will see in different parts of your life where there, that attention isn't being given and it will cry out for that attention. Um, and you will, you know, you just, um, the last thing that I will say is, we have about 10 minutes. Um, the last thing that I'll say is um, that you don't want to resist either of the, either of the ebbs or flows. You just, you really want to, um, just really pay attention to them and just lean into them. 
if you resist them, they get worse. <laughs> Especially that M. Um, it gets you, you. I have gone to very dark places when I have tried to resist the fact that I need to just stop and pause and um, step away, or whatever the case was that I needed to do for whatever that wall was that I was hitting. Um, so that's pretty much it on the ebbs and flows of uh, grace, and you know, using that and pay, and and knowing that. They definitely echo what's going on in your life journey. I've seen in so many cases, you know, um, where I, in situations for me anyway, where I have um, definitely, if, if I'm up, I'm up everywhere. You know, I'm doing well in most places um, in my life, but when I'm down, a lot of things fall by the wayside, balls get dropped, and it really forces me to um, just be introspective, pay attention to what's going on, and lean on the people who are there to support me as far as my support group and stuff. Um, so that's it for the presentation. I did want to um, share, I always like to give, as my mother-in-law says, give Jack his, her, or their jacket. So these are where the images came from. Um, and um, I kind of went over takeaways before, you know, just pay attention to what's going on. Listen to, listen, seriously, listen to your emotions because they are giving you valuable information about where you are. Know that ebbs and flows are not something that you can avoid in life. You can't avoid them in life. You can't avoid them in business. Um, but they're there for a reason, and if you lean into either of them um, at any given point, then they will support you, and the challenges that you go through will provide you with proof that you've been through something and you can get on the other side of it because you've done it before. And um, define what health and wellness look like for you. I think we, a lot of times, allow other people to do that for ourselves, for us. And once you have a good definition of what that looks like for you, um, depending on the life stage that you're in, depending on the business stage that you're in, because if you're in that startup phase, I'll be honest with you, that's probably going to be your only focus. And that's okay, because you'll be able to come out of that at some point and focus on the other pieces of, of your life. Um, but definitely recognize what stage you're in, what it's requiring of you, and then define what health and well-being looks like for you based on those, those different stages. So those, that's my takeaway. Um, and the ways to practice that, um, it's different for everybody, but I just like to say, you know, journaling has really worked for me. Meditation, surprisingly, I had to take a meditation class with a bunch of people to learn how to meditate, which I thought was funny. Um, but meditation has helped. Um, getting out and walking, I mean, that is one of the best practices that I have as far as being able to clear my head, redefine, and um, even check in with myself as far as my expectations, because I have very high expectations for myself. Um, so those are some of the practices and play around with it, right? I, a play is very important. Another practice, play. Um, play can look like, you know, just doodling. Play can look like I was doing cartwheels the other day. I haven't done cartwheels since I was, before I was a teenager. I didn't even know I still knew how to do a cartwheel. Um, you know, so going out and finding ways to play, um, doing, creating little hobbies or hobbies that aren't part of um, you know, how you bring in revenue or your bread and butter. I have, you know, my daughter and I, we make jewelry and I don't want to sell it to anybody. It's just a nice way for me to sit down, be still and just focus on, you know, what is this bead going to do and do these colors go together? And can I get this wire to fold the way that I want to fold it? But it takes me out of the day to day of what's going on with my business, where that is. Um, or even some of the other household running things that I have to do. So that's the other thing. I will always recommend if you're starting out entrepreneurship, no matter where you are in your business, find ways to play. All right. And ways to stay in touch. So Instagram, I'm all over the place, literally. Um, <laughs> but Instagram is one of the best ones. LinkedIn, I do check that. And then, of course, you can always go to uh, my company website, Resource and Healthcare, and it allows you to email me through there. Um, and then 
Yeah, email. I'm I'm good old fashioned email or or DM on the Instagram. Awesome. So I'll open up any questions or you know any comments, any thoughts, did anything resonate with anybody? Yeah, in the chat you got some love from Daniela. Um, oh, she says hi. I love this. <laughs> um, yeah, no. If anybody has any questions um, on the Zoom, feel free to unmute and um, ask your questions. Or um, anybody in the room um, can also feel free to um, ask questions. We have microphones in the ceiling, so everyone will hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the reminder to play. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, Daniela, for this, I need a reminder. Yeah, 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 thank you for this. I need a reminder to play. Perfect. Awesome. I'm not seeing any other questions come in the chat. I mean, okay. and we can we can definitely end um, a few minutes early if sure. nobody has anything else they'd like to like to add. But thank you so much, John. This was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah.